You are tuned in to the beats that never stop. A cultural history of the arts, hosted by Aggie Kid and guest. Hello, dear listeners. It is your humble host, Aggie Kid, returning with a new episode of The Beats That Never Stop. Last episode, we explored the influence of African music and traditions on what we listen to today. On this episode, we'll be looking at the power and effect of music on the mind and memory. According to Daniel J. Levitin, author of This Is Your Brain on Music, music has the ability to activate every area of the brain that we have mapped out so far. To steal a quote from him, there's no area of the brain that we know about that music doesn't touch in some way. Journalist Peter Rubin went on a personal journey to uncover what exactly happens when we come into contact with auditory art. But before we get into what he found, let's take a quick music break. This is Avs featuring Belle Ami with Funny Thing About Love. I must have been searching, though I wasn't looking for much. Checking out the scene, wasn't trying to get my numbers up. You know I keep it cool. I prefer to stay in the cut Don't want no attention on me When I'm trying to shake the blues up off me But then I saw your face oh, It caused my heart to race Girl, you're looking like a million bucks oh, Something about the way you strut your stuff oh, oh, Girl, you're fine as you wanna What I'm supposed to do oh, Something told me got it time to lose oh, Go ahead and bust a move Funny thing about love, when it comes and goes, you're not alone. So, you gotta keep your heart exposed, and you can be sure there's no cause and no cure. And if it wants you, uh, oh, it'll come and find you. Uh. So, how did the song make you feel? Did you notice any particular reactions or involuntary responses? Going forward, I want you to make note of how you physically engage with all of the music that you're currently hearing. While you do that, I'll share more of what Peter Rubin discovered. In 2019, he visited the USC Brain and Creativity Institute where he laid in an fMRI machine. This allowed them to scan his brain activity to see what's happening while listening to different recorded pieces. True to Daniel J's words, the entirety of Peter's brain lit up with activity. In the past, it was believed that only certain portions of the brain controlled and reacted to specific stimuli. Language being attributed to the left side of the brain and creativity being associated with the right side of the brain. However, due to better technology and the tools of today, we've been able to see that this isn't the case. Music in particular gets processed not just by the auditory cortex, but also the visual cortex working together with the cerebellum and hippocampus to create emotional responses and memories based on what you're seeing and hearing. Your motor cortex making your thoughts and feelings physical when you nod along to the music, dance, or thrash about in the middle of a mosh pit. With that, let's take another quick music break. Again, I want you to observe what kind of reactions you're having to the music that's being played. This is light music with when it hurts. I wonder if in heaven, if I still have you by my side. Cause I don't ever know if I'll ever let you go. I'll never let you go. Oh, oh. Cause you pick me up from out of the dirt. And you give me feelings I don't deserve. You gave me your love when I didn't earn it. Help me close, you help me, even when it hurts. <laughs> Naturally, the same type of brain activity expands and increases a great deal among actual musicians. Beyond singing memorized songs and performing rehearsed movements, there is also improvisation, reacting to your environment, incorporating and adapting to your surroundings and circumstances. USC has also studied how musicianship has affected the development of children. 
Music training over the course of five years showcased benefits in cognitive skills, decision making, social behavior, and changes within the associated brain structures. The brains of children who have studied music have stronger connections between the left and right hemispheres of their brain, which is all well and good, but how does music affect adults, specifically elders, those who may suffer with a particular ailment or brain damage of some kind? Well, in Australia, there's a program where they use music to help treat retired residents with dementia. The program, called Music and Memory, makes personal playlists for each patient and prescribes them like medication during listening sessions, after which the caretakers ask them questions about their lives related to the music. Also in Australia taking place, within the Human Movement Lab, they've been able to observe an activation of different motor functions allowing those afflicted with the disease to not only move regularly, but also even learn to dance again. Similar therapies and discoveries have also been found and utilized by reaction therapists such as Yvonne Russell of Cobble Hill. Using an iPod, she was able to seemingly reactivate two elders who sat mostly dormant when nothing else she attempted worked. One last instance that I'll share is the rehabilitation of former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. In 2011, an attempt was made on her life, which left her severely brain damaged and unable to speak. When Gabrielle struggled to say certain words, her therapist would use music and singing to train her brain into being able to once again say those words. If you were to look up an interview with her 10 years after the shooting, she is, while not fully recovered, once again speaking clearly and coherently. To that, I say that there is simply, undeniably something healing about the power of music. Be it magic or just our response of evolution, it's nothing short of incredible. Now, before we wrap things up, I present to you one last song, Love You by Shu. you've heard today has piqued your interest in the subject of how music and sound affects the human mind, I highly encourage you to research more. There's always more to be discovered and shared. The backing music from this episode has been by Deuce Williams and Monsiege. They, as well as the other artists featured in this episode, can be found on artlist.io. Simply type in their name into the search and they'll come right up. Before I depart, I'd also like to remind you to stay safe and get checked regularly. Sickness is no joke, especially where COVID is concerned. Take your health seriously, if not for your own sake, then for the sake of your friends and loved ones. With that, I've been your humble host, Aggie Kid, and this concludes the latest edition of The Beats That Never Stop. Until next time, I'm out. This has been The Beats That Never Stop, a cultural history of the arts hosted by Aggie Kid and guests. If you'd like to make suggestions, email us at ewcfacts at gmail.com. That's ewcfacts at gmail.com. This has been an EWC Communication Production.